Hi everyone, it's Jack back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Neo, the Chinese electric vehicle manufacturer, down 57.5% since just the start of this year and down from a 52 week high of $55. Stock is getting absolutely trashed at the minute. Still now a $27 billion company, so it's had a long way to fall. One of the few pure play EV companies that actually makes vehicles at a decent rate and is making consistent revenue. I want to analyse whether it's oversold or whether all these fears are legitimate and why it has actually fallen so much. The primary driver of the fall in Chinese stocks, Neo included, over the last year or so, is regulation and delisting fears. I spoke about this before with Alibaba and my thoughts on this. I think they are largely overblown. I don't think Neo is is going to be delisted from the US stock market. Neo and a few others dropped due to f- today. Neo is down about 12% due to five companies that were named by the SEC as non-compliant, and they said they will be taking future act action against these companies. Neo was not one of these companies. Neo, Xpend and Ally also have been na- haven't been named by the SEC but their shares were down significantly due to clearly fear is real in the day here and the fears are of course n- not completely unfounded. Na- Neo has been taking steps to prefer for all out. The most obvious step they've, they've taken and perhaps the most worrying is that they've listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange a secondary listing. Listing outside the US obviously does not help the delisting worries and rumours. Fact of the matter is, should Neo delist, it's far better for investors to have it listed elsewhere because this will maintain liquidity, just like it would happen with Didi. Obviously, how easy it is to shift shares depends on your broker and depends how you buy and sell shares, but they will be tradable in some manner. And this is effectively good news if you're a Neo shareholder or thinking of buying shares and you're worried about the delistment. I don't think the delistment will happen. I think that's bad for the Chinese government, it's bad for the US government, and most importantly, it's bad for US share, US shareholders. I think it'd be a terrible thing for the SEC to do. I can't see it happening, although it is obviously a, non, a non-zero risk of this happening, and fears are completely founded. I just think this is way overblown. This is a company that's reduced. It's down about nearly 80% from its highs. On purely diesel listing fears, that is ridiculous. Of course, it's been a wide decline in the growth market, but that isn't it here. So as if a wide market decline and fears around Chinese stocks wasn't enough, new local lockdowns in China with the entire city of Shenzhen shutting down have caused a further drop in the stock price. Of course, these are short-term in nature, we imagine. Business should continue as usual in no time, perhaps with some supply chain disruptions, some factory disruptions, a bit of a hit to revenue. But as we'll talk about in a minute, the multiples for for Neo have came down so much that this is already far, far more than priced in, in my opinion. Whenever a promising company like is oversold like this, I want to take a look at its investment case, dig deeper into its valuation, its growth strategy, and importantly its balance sheet. So looking at the balance sheet on the right hand side, company's balance sheet metrics look okay to me. Company's financial health looks pretty good. Cash set ratio of 2.26, which is the most important one here for me. Very good for this industry. Of course, it's a young company, but take a look at Ford's, for example, of how out of control automotive balance sheets can be. It makes it a lot easier when you're a low ca- low debt, nimble company with good cash reserves. They have $7.3 billion in cash or equivalents on the balance sheet at the last report, which is a healthy amount for future growth and more than enough to fuel that, in my opinion. Taking a look at the valuation, not many that can, can really be drawn on it because it's not, not consistently profitable. Up the, up at the top, price sales ratio of 4.53. Obviously, this is ridiculously low for Neo's history, basically since since it first came on the stock market and had a real explosion when it started delivering vehicles. This is the lowest that we've seen and is massive, massive multiple contraction from from the highs, and rightly so because it was clearly overvalued at its highs. Take a look at the latest financial data we have to go on. A bit small, I do apologise, but this is the only way I can really show it easily. Deliveries of vehicles, so as I said, they're consistently delivering vehicles at a really good rate, just shy of 25,000 in the third quarter. This is the most recent day we have to go on, which is Q3 2021. That's been growing at a decent rate. Q4 in 2020, they delivered 17,000 vehicles. By Q3 2021, 24,400. Excellent. Vehicle sales for the year were up 102%, with revenue increasing 116%, and that is a 20% gross margin, which again is up from 14% earlier on in the year. Gross profit was up a staggering 240%. Of course, this company is still loss making with a net loss of 129 million for the quarter. I don't think this will continue for much longer. We'll have a look at some analyst estimates in a minute. But clearly, this company is going in the right way. Gross, gross margin of 20% is not amazing by any means. For the automotive industry, it's actually pretty good. 
net margins will come in much lower than that of course but they're making a lot a lot of revenue already as i mentioned cash and equivalents came in at 7.3 billion easily enough to to fuel future growth and net loss was around 129 million for the quarter so still still loss making and still loss making by a considerable amount but not ridiculous considering revenue is now coming in quarterly at over a billion dollars at 1.34 billion so I'm, I'm more than happy with that net loss and i think it's coming down nicely so a nice up, upcoming catalyst for, for neo is the release of the et7 and the et5 the et7 particularly sounds absolutely incredible thousand kilometer potent, potential range which is probably the highest i've seen i'm not super involved with the ev industry but that is about the highest i've ever seen technology is legitimate and they're making cars at a tremendous rate as we saw earlier making nearly twenty five thousand deliveries in the most recent quarter expanding the product range and performance can only be a good thing i think this really could be the tesla of china in many ways that it was cracked up to be when it was when it was a nearly a hundred billion dollar stock so i think this is definitely good here and these numbers if they if they actually spin out are incredible next i want to take a look at some analyst estimates to give you an idea of the future growth potential so december 2021 numbers they're predictive we'll find out the full result full year results on march 24th revenues currently predicted to come in at around 5.65 billion when they report later this month revenues are predicted to grow a strong rate through 2022 and beyond by 2023 revenues are expected to be around 16 billion so roughly triple where they are where they are at the end of 2022 by 2026 even further out expected to be 30 billion dollars of course analyst estimates take that with a pinch of salt but this is serious serious growth potential profitability is expected by the end of 2023 these to me are all really bullish indicators of the future of the business you got to remember this is a business that's trading about four and a half times sales and it's trading around three times 2022 expected sales this chinese market is absolutely massive and they have a lot of growth potential to go into and in, in not a long amount of time they're going to be seriously profitable as well no dcf today because i don't think it's it means anything with this company it's not consistently profitable it's not free cash flow positive i believe these delisting fears here are justified but completely overblown as same with alibaba perhaps neo is more at risk but again like i'm quite happy to I think the risk profile is more than priced in here. The company at its highs was clearly overvalued and selling from there was completely justified. I think even with both these factors, with the lockdowns, selling has got vastly carried away in my opinion. It's down 70%, 77% from its all-time highs, which I think is just ridiculous. This is now a $27 billion company growing at revenue over 100%, del- deliveries over 100% with decent gross margins and the revenues are predicted to grow 600 percent by 2026 analyst expectations are of course not everything and famously unreliable it should be taken with a pinch of salt of course but the time for this company is absolutely enormous the chinese market is enormous and there is a growing middle class in china with a demand for these type of luxury sedans and truly i believe that these revenue numbers are completely achievable getting its close into the chinese market early will give it a big first mover advantage in my opinion similar to how tesla had in north america it'll be get a lot of brand equity i think all this combination at four times sale valuation is clearly far more reasonable than it has been in a long long time i think it more than pricing the possibility of delistment i think should neo continue on its growth trajectory this is an incredibly rare opportunity to grab an early stage behemoth what i consider it to be a baby tesla in an enormous market i'll be watching the q4 report very very closely it comes out on march 24th just to see how the company is doing if it's continuing on its revenue trajectory hopefully that net loss is closing up a bit and we see if it's still on its path to profitability but i think this company is going to be a serious giant delistment or not but again i don't think it's going to be delisted but of course this none of this is financial advice if you want financial advice you speak to a registered financial advisor do your own research and due diligence before buying a stock and enjoy your day like and subscribe if you enjoying the content. I'll see you again.